the raging civil war in Yemen gave the Al-Qaeda affiliate there the ability to move in and take over this southern port city of Mukalla, giving the most dangerous Al-Qaeda group in the region a new place to dig in. In response, the Pentagon sent in a small number of U.S. troops to advise and assist Saudi and Emirati forces trying to eliminate the Al-Qaeda threat. From the Middle East to Africa and beyond, the Obama administration is now involved in multiple small wars, fighting ISIS and Al-Qaeda by using special operations forces. Though their numbers are small, using the best trained troops in the U.S. military is a massive commitment. We're helping partners strengthen their security forces from Africa to Afghanistan. <laughs> wars that are likely to outlast Obama's presidency. The next president is going to get a whole bunch of small wars in his or her basket. In Libya, there are an estimated 6,000 ISIS fighters and no central government to fight them. We're going to continue to use the full range of our tools to roll ISIL back from Libya. The Pentagon planning how and when to move in. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff says a top priority. To further develop the intelligence that we would need uh, to support operations in Libya. In Somalia, 50 U.S. troops are at remote locations, advising and assisting Somali and African forces in the fight against the local al-Qaeda group known as al-Shabaab. And in West Africa, U.S. troops also trying to prevent ISIS and al-Qaeda from gaining toeholds there. The risks are huge, as the recent death of Navy SEAL Charles Keating shows, just advising and assisting can turn into combat in seconds. Keating killed when other Navy SEALs came under fire in northern Iraq. No one suggesting any of these small wars are going to subside by Inauguration Day here in the United States, a challenge for the next president.